Now we will quickly demonstrate how the collet chuck is mounted and then return to installing the three jaw chuck. Collet chucks grip the workpiece as well or better than the most accurate set of soft jaws. The collet chuck body attaches solidly to the spindle face and the draw nut connects the collet to the draw tube, which compresses the collet in against the chuck body, gripping the workpiece. Andrew starts with the draw tube in the unclamped position and he cleans the draw tube threads. Next, he cleans both the inner and outer threads on the draw nut. Carefully thread the draw nut onto the draw tube until it reaches the face and back the nut out a quarter turn. Actuate the chuck pedal to bring the draw tube back in towards the spindle. Spray some WD-40 on the collet body mounting face and lightly check for burrs with the deburring stone. Then clean the mounting face and taper. Carefully mount the collet body with the spindle dog engaging the recessed alignment hole. Thread in the bolts to secure the collet body. Carefully clean inside and outside of the collet to ensure no chips or other debris impede inserting the tight-fitting collet. Actuate the clamping circuit again to bring the draw tube to the unclamped position. Now, insert the collet into the chuck body. It is a tight and accurate fit and it may hang up slightly. A few small taps with a light mallet will generally align it so it will fall into place. For the make of the unit we have here, we need to rotate the collet counterclockwise to engage the draw nut threads and bring it towards the chuck body. Don't forget to install the anti-rotation screw in the collet chuck body. With the collet slot aligned with the screw hole, thread in the anti-rotation screw and tighten it. Refer to the collet documentation regarding the proper adjustments for gripping your material. Removing the collet chuck is simply a reversal of the installation steps. Now let's get right back to finishing our 10 inch power chuck install. Mount the adapter plate on the spindle face, aligning the spindle's locating dog to one of the recessed holes on the adapter plate. Andrew inserts the six connecting screws and also two of the chuck mounting screws. Along with the large wrench, these will again keep the spindle from rotating. Torque the screws to the value recommended in the manual that came with your chuck. If for any reason you think there might still be contamination or something else cocking the adapter plate, then attach an indicator to the spindle bulkhead and check the face runout of the adapter plate. The runout should be less than 5 ten thousandths at the edge of the adapter plate. Now we're ready to mount the chuck body. Place a few dabs of anti-seize or chuckies grease on the draw nut threads. Andrew brings the rolling hoist back to the table, lifts the chuck body, and moves the chuck back to a position beside the adapter plate, where he carefully adjusts the lift to match the heights of the draw nut and draw tube. The draw tube is still in the same mid-travel extended position where we e-stopped it earlier. Bring the draw nut up against the threaded draw tube end and slowly start the nut rotating clockwise using the nut drive tool. Don't force the rotation if it becomes difficult. Andrew notices the draw nut is not screwing on easily. He unscrews the nut and pulls the chuck body away. He rechecks the alignment, cleans the threads again, and checks for any thread damage. He adds another light coat of chuck grease to the draw nut threads and again visually checks alignment of the draw nut and draw tube. He restarts the draw nut and this time it rotates easily. He continues threading the nut until it is about three quarters engaged on the draw tube thread. Next, make sure the chuck attaching screws also have a liberal coating of anti-seize or chuckies grease. Align the chuck body holes to the adapter holes and install and hand tighten the six screws. Andrew detaches the hook and moves the hoist out of the way. He installs one of the top jaws to counter spindle rotation. He sets his torque wrench and torques the screws to the value recommended in the manual.
Andrew removes the single top jaw assembly. He continues threading the draw nut clockwise, inwards, until it bottoms against the end of the draw tube thread. Then he rotates the draw nut two and a half turns in the counterclockwise direction. This will position the master jaws close to the correct point in their travel range. Now energize the chuck and check that the number one master jaw indicating mark aligns to the travel range marks in both the clamped and unclamped states. Andrew notes that the jaw indicating mark does not retract far enough with the chuck fully unclamped and travels too far as it reaches the fully clamped position. To readjust the draw nut in the unbound state, he presses E stop again at the midpoint of master jaw travel. He rotates the draw nut one and a half turns in the counterclockwise direction to move the jaws outward. He checks the travel again and finds the limits are now correctly set. When clamped, the entire chuck and draw tube assembly is held tight by clamping force. But you might wonder if the draw nut can move out of adjustment when the chuck is moving from the clamped to unclamped position. There is a spring-loaded ball inside the plunger nut, which locates in detents on the draw nut. The ball clicks into place, locking and maintaining its position. Reinstall the chip cover. The top jaws can now be installed and this chuck is ready for operation. 